Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is the X and Y displacement of a projectile. Here's the questions we wish to answer. What is meant by horizontal and vertical displacement and how do you calculate the horizontal and vertical displacement? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. One of the previous videos in this tutorial series is the motion characteristics of a projectile. I'm going to review it kind of quickly, but you may want to go back and watch it yourself. First, projectiles are objects upon which the only force of influence is gravity, and gravity is a vertical force. As a vertical force, it only affects the vertical motion of a projectile. The horizontal motion is unaffected by the force of gravity. We often think of projectiles as exhibiting two simultaneous but independent motions, and any analysis of a projectile's motion will involve two analysis one for that vertical motion affected by gravity, and the other for the horizontal motion unaffected by gravity. In physics, the term displacement refers to the overall change in position of an object. When it comes to projectiles like this one here, we often think in terms of horizontal displacement and vertical displacement. The horizontal displacement is the overall change in the horizontal position of the object, whereas the vertical displacement is the overall change in the Y position of an object. What we never do in physics when we're discussing projectiles is we never think in terms of the diagonal displacement. We think of projectiles as exhibiting these two independent yet simultaneous motions, a horizontal and a vertical. And the diagonal is simply the result of it. So in physics, we always avoid discussing the diagonal displacement of the projectile. We're going to begin talking about the vertical displacement by considering a ball released from rest from the top of a tall cliff. The original y velocity is 0 meters per second because it's not moving upwards nor downwards originally, and the a y is 9.8 meters per second per second downwards. Here's a kinematic equation for one dimensional motion for calculating a displacement. We can use it to calculate vertical displacement as long as the variable values we substitute into it are vertical variable values. For instance, I could rewrite the equation as dy for vertical displacement equal v original y, original y velocity, times t. That's the first term on the right side. The second term is 1 half times ay, vertical acceleration, times t squared. Because the ball is released from rest, originally the y velocity is 0, so the first term cancels out. And the ay is 9.8 meters per second per second down, or negative 9.8. I can use this equation for vertical displacement to calculate the vertical displacement at 1, 2, 3, and 4 seconds. For 1 second, I just have to substitute the value 1 into that equation for t and square it. And I end up getting negative 4.9 meters. For two seconds, I substitute 2 into the equation, square it, and I end up getting negative 19.6 meters. For three seconds, I repeat the process with t equal 3, and I get negative 44.1. And for four seconds, I can use this special equation and get negative 78.4 meters for a four-second vertical displacement. So here's the results of the calculations we just did for the vertical displacement of a projectile. But for some quicker, back-of-the-envelope style calculations, we often use an AY value of negative 10 meters per second per second. That causes this kinematic equation to turn into dy equal 1 half times negative 10 times t squared, or simply negative 5 t squared. We can use this equation with values of 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds to recalculate these vertical displacements we'll get approximate values, but we'll get them much more quickly. What we would see for one second is a displacement of negative 5 meters, 2 seconds, negative 20 meters, 3 seconds, negative 45 meters, and 4 seconds, negative 80 meters. We sometimes call these numbers the magic numbers, because by remembering them, we can quickly conclude what time it would take a projectile to fall if, if released or shot horizontally off the top of an 80 meter high cliff. It would take 4 seconds, or off of a 45 meter high cliff. It would take three seconds. Or off of a 20 meter high cliff, it would take two, two seconds and one second off of a five meter high cliff. When calculating the horizontal displacement of a projectile, we can use the same kinematic equation we just used. Only this time, we have to plug into the equation horizontal variable values. For instance, to calculate the dx, we need to substitute vox values into this formula and ax values into this formula. Now, it ends up that for a projectile, the horizontal acceleration is 0. So the second term on the right side would totally cancel out. Simplifying the equation to the form, d equal vox times t. 
Let's use the equation to analyze this. Consider a ball launched horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of an 80 meter tall cliff. We just learned the magic number 80 meters means that it would take four seconds to hit the ground. So in the data table, we're gonna calculate the dx value for one, two, three, and four seconds. To do it for one second, we just have to go 15 meters per second times one. For two seconds, 15 times two, three seconds, 15 times three, and for the last row, we go 15 times four. It gives us these values for the horizontal displacement of the projectile. The calculations we just performed of dx and dy were for a ball launched horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of an 80 meter tall cliff, like this one. And now what we can do with these values is we can plot them on a trajectory plot like the one you see here. The ball starts at the top of the cliff at the origin 0, 0. And I can use dx and dy and plot the locations of the ball at 1, 2, 3, and 4 seconds. And you see it done there. And what strikes you right away is that the trajectory of a projectile is parabolic. And it's parabolic because horizontally the ball moves to cover a horizontal displacement that's proportional to time to the first power. And vertically it moves such that the vertical displacement is proportional to time to the second power. And that yields us the familiar parabolic trajectory of a projectile. We've been analyzing a ball shot horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of an 80 meter high cliff. But what if it was a little slower at 10 meters per second, or a little faster at 20 meters per second? How would that affect the trajectory? Well, the first thing we can say is it won't affect the time to fall vertically because a horizontal speed is independent of a vertical motion. But what it does affect is how far the projectiles go horizontally. Like at 10 meters per second, in the four seconds of falling to the ground, it will go 40 meters. For 20 meters per second, it will go 80 meters. Another thing we notice is that if we look at one second or two seconds or three seconds or four seconds, we notice that the distance the ball has dropped is the same irregardless of how fast it's moving horizontally. We've been discussing horizontally launched projectiles. Now let's consider projectiles launched at an angle to the horizontal, such that there's now a V original Y component of velocity. We can calculate the values of dx and dy by using these VOX and VOYs in our equation. Here's the formulas we've been using. For the dx formula, it's as simple as VOX times T, no change there. But for the dy, we now have to consider VOY times T, that first term. And the second term is still 1 half AYT squared. We're going to use negative 10 for the value of AY, even though we know negative 9.8 will be a little more precise. So let's consider originally the VOX is 12 and the VOY is 20. And let's fill in this table here for dx and dy values. For dx, it's a simple formula. We're just gonna go 12 times the time, and we end up getting these values. But for dy, there's two terms on the right side. We're gonna calculate each term separately, so you'll notice there's a column for each in the, in the table. So when we substitute the value of 20 for VOY and the value of negative 10 for AY, we end up getting these values for the, the first term, the second term, and the overall value of dy. So here's the table of values we just calculated. We now have values of dx and dy for this angle launch projectile. And what we can do is create a trajectory plot. As we do, we're gonna give attention to this formula right here for dy, the one that has two terms in it. Each term, we calculated its value in the table in separate columns. We're gonna look at the meaning of that equation. So the first term, voy times t, gives us a feel for the gravity-free path of the projectile, it tells us how high the projectile would rise due to the effect of that original velocity. And on the trajectory plot, what we notice is that's the magenta straight line path that we see there. That tells us the gravity-free path. But the second term tells us the effect of gravity. And if we look in that column for that term, it's the second from the right, we notice the numbers 5, 20, 45, 80, the magic numbers. It tells us how far the projectile falls below the gravity-free path for each of those times. And it yields this red line, the true path of the projectile that takes into account both the gravity-free and the effects of gravity. Now the distance between the pink or magenta dots and the red dots is simply the 5, the 50, the 20, the 45, the 80, etc. And we see that here on the diagram. Now that's geeky cool. I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping make the learning stick. But before I help you out with that, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a comment in the comment section below. Now for the action plan. 
four possible things that you might want to do to make the learning stick. The first one is a simulation, a great chance to experiment, change a variable, observe the effect. The next two are concept builders, great practice for making the learning stick. And finally, we have a tutorial page, actually a whole chapter, that might be useful reading, a way of brushing up on what we've discussed in this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.